Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of McMillan and Morrow. <laughs> we need like cheering, don't we? We can insert I'm that. Dr. That's insert I'm Dr. Insert cheering. Sean McMillan. This is my co-host, <laughs> Rich Morrow. What's good, everybody? And so, we're back. Thank you for being a part of this. This is going to be an interesting hour. And it's always interesting when we gather because the amazing, the ridiculous, the sublime, the generous, the kind, the profane and the sacred, the ethereal and the ephemeral, all gather together right here. Take your shoes off. <laughs> Come on, Rich Morrow. What's going on you in the world? ready for this, huh? That's a lot going on in the world. You know that. And there's a lot going on in Florida, too, as always. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so um, on this fine Thursday, we're going to dive into the News Globe story about a man who, man, we were talking about petty on our last episode. This is also pretty petty also. Um, a man steals a ring from one of his girlfriends down there to propose to his other girlfriend. And he got arrested for stealing. <laughs> but he had a warrant out for his arrest because um, it was an engagement ring that he stole and the wedding bands from his girlfriend in Orange County, or Orange City, rather, and used them pro to propose to his other girlfriend that was in Orlando. He went by two different names with different girlfriends as well. So he was, yeah, out here really living a double life, two different names, two different girlfriends, and he's getting charged. So the women dodged the bullet, both of them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, are, they ought to be praying every night mm -hmm. that um, he stole the ring. The best thing that ever happened to either of them was that he stole that ring. Because, now because he's one of them would have ended up marrying him and would have ended up in a terrible situation. Absolutely. It says, it, it, but isn't it mm -hmm. funny how sometimes the things that break your heart are some of the best things that Biggest happen blessings, to you? Biggest blessings, yeah. You know? I, I say this all the time. If God has to break my heart to give me everything I prayed for. You break it yesterday. And crack away. <laughs> <laughs> I will heal. I will, I will roll around on the floor and cry. I will eat chicken at 3 o'clock in the morning. I will listen to Luther Vandross, my favorite song, So the Amazing. Snot Bubbles coming out your nose. Cry every time I hear it. <laughs> and I will, that will last for Wait, about, what song? So amazing, Luther Okay, Man. okay. And I will cry, mm -hmm. and then I will get up off the floor <laughs> and be better. Yeah. Look, I ain't afraid to cry. I ain't afraid of tears. I hear you. You know? And the woman um, that was a girlfriend, she came forward and told detectives that she discovered her boyfriend was actually engaged to somebody else. Well, this is how it came out. And um, she looked up her fiance's Facebook page, and she noticed a photo of her wearing a wedding band <laughs> an engagement ring that was identical to hers from a prior marriage, obviously. And she went to check her jewelry box and discovered that they were missing. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, why are people, this is a generic question, proverbial. Mm -hmm. I, why are people like this? Why, why would you even, why would you want to hurt someone or put someone in that situation to lie to them to that degree? I, I don't understand that kind of level, kind of that level of evil. It's greed. It's selfishness. Absolutely. The only thing you care about is you, mm. and you don't care about the damage or the hurt that you create with other people. I, I just don't. I don't get it. Yeah. I, I pray that I'm never that kind of person. I pray that I'm not that kind of person now. I just, that's just terrible. But again, him stealing that ring is the best thing that ever happened to all the women. What, what is this in Florida? Mm -hmm. All the women in Florida. Y'all need to thank God that this man was dumb enough to steal a ring because that's what got him caught. And that's what got him out of the cycle of destroying other people's lives. Yeah, I mean, it's what we've talked about, I feel like, many times on the show is people's desire to be liked and things of that nature. They're going to desperate lengths at times for things that aren't desperate situations. You're desperately trying to live a double life just because you've, like, come on. Like, you got a whole new identity. You're engaged on one end. You got a girlfriend on the other. That got to be exhausting in itself. But whatever is driving somebody to do that is a bigger concern than anything. Because I don't know what needs to happen in somebody's life for them to feel like they got to live a double life and, you know, be so reckless. <laughs> you know? Like, what are you running from? 
You could just be single. <laughs> it's the How much. about you just be honest? And honest. Tell everybody what it is. If you want multiple girlfriends, you can just tell them. Just tell them. But we're, like, we're only going to go so far. Yeah. And this is what it is. You'd be surprised how many people who'd be with it. Yeah. But you'll never know because you never ask. Because you were never courageous enough to be mm -hmm. honest. And, and you have to have some integrity yeah. to be able to marshal, handle honesty. And you use the word courage, though. It's a courageous thing to do. I know um, just from my own personal feelings and experiences of you know, having conversations when you first meet someone. Um, it's not always easy to bring up topics that may or may not, you know, upset or give somebody the option to walk away right then and there. But I feel like out of respect to people, we owe that to people, to be honest with them, you know? So. Yeah, and you owe it to yourself. Yeah. It's, it's just a better way. Honesty is just a better way of being in the world. Of course, we all have falsehood in us. We all lie. Yeah. You know, nobody can say, I never tell a lie. That's true. We all lie uh, on some level. But, you know, this guy is, he's like the worst version of masculinity <laughs> that you could possibly it. get. Any version of masculinity or femininity that ultimately ends in hurting someone yeah. um, is the worst version of that. And he is, he is more than willing to lie and hurt people. Mm -hmm. And... It's just, the, I just, regrettably, it's just the nature of the world that we live in. We are, we're producing more people like that than the lie. Than we are producing people who are virtuous and honest. That is very true. He's the norm. That's sad, but it's the reality. You want to restore your faith in humanity? Let's go to this next story. According to People Magazine, right, in Texas, a man proposes. Well, I'm not even going to read the headline, all right? A Texas man and his girlfriend had their house destroyed by a tornado, right? It ripped through a county called Lamar down there. To make things worse, he had hidden an engagement ring in the house and was waiting for the perfect moment to finally propose. Of course, the tornado kind of disrupted his plans. After the tornado, he didn't think he was going to see the ring, obviously. You wouldn't be thinking you're going to find a ring after a tornado. Junior college softball team offered to help find and clean up the house, or not even to help find the ring, but they were just going to be cleaning up the house and searching for whatever they could find. And despite the odds, they found the jewelry buried two inches underground. <laughs> and when they found it, the man wasted no time and proposed to his girlfriend. And um, the softball team was there to witness it. It's kind of a feel-good story. Hmm. The odds of that happening are very, very low, though. Have you ever experienced a tornado? No. No? That's a legitimate question. No, have you? I'm from Ohio. I haven't been in like a bad one, but I've been not far from one. I've seen them. No, well, no, I've never experienced a tornado. And this guy should have proposed to his girlfriend before the damn tornado came through. You think it was a sign? I mean, <laughs> when you know what you want and you're clear that you want it, what are you waiting for? Sometimes life to catch up a little bit, give it time to find My mama out. used to say, it don't take all day to recognize sunshine. You know it when you see it. If you know that that's the person you're supposed to be with, then go in and make it happen. Mm -hmm. Because you never know when life might take one of you away. And that almost happened in this story. Not, not just the ring. Them, yeah. Almost took one of them away. Yeah, you're right. And there's a lot of people procrastinating mm -hmm. and waiting for something to be whatever it is they're waiting for it to be in their minds when you need to do what you know and feel you most need to do. And that's not even just relationships. That's everything. everything. Dr. Mm -hmm. King called it the fierce urgency of now. The fierce urgency of now. It's poetic. That I have this moment, and it's all I have. It's all I can be sure of. It's, it's the only moment. thing I can lay my claim on and put my hand on. And if I don't do something in this moment, Nothing's going to happen in this moment. I'm not promised any other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you're not even promised another one, yeah. You know, if you have somebody you want to love, love them now. Mm-hmm. You got somebody you want to be close to. Let them to, know. Forgive them now. Yeah. Be close to them now. Talk to them now. Spend time with them now. You're right. Give them the ring now. Yeah. You don't have to wait till after a tornado happens and some kids find it buried under two feet or whatever. Yeah. And how would you translate that to other aspects of life that we can relay the same principles for? Well, like, I mean, you want me to say it differently? <laughs> no, just in terms of not just relationships between two people, but 
in your own personal life. Well, it doesn't even relate only to relationship. Is there anything that you really want to do? Yeah. Do it now. No. Start the process of building it now. Mm-hmm. You may not be able to run the business or have the business in this immediate moment. But you, but you can start to pull those things together. You can start to do the research. You can start mm-hmm. to do whatever it is to start to set you in the right direction. Yeah. But waiting for something to get better, or waiting until you feel like it, or waiting until the world gets fair, or waiting until you have more money is a recipe for you never to get it done. You'll be waiting the rest of your life. Do it now. Yeah. With no money, with little support, mm-hmm. with the whole thing not mapped out. Yeah. Go on and at least try to set your ambitions and your intentions mm-hmm. in the general direction of your dreams. And nobody can stop you from doing that. You no. can't, nobody can tell, <laughs> nobody can control your intentions but you. No, you're right. And if I'm going to work every day, see, Toni Morrison, the great novelist, would go to work in the day, mm-hmm. in the after, in the, you know, nine or whatever. Yeah. And then she would get up at four o'clock in the morning to write her books. So she is working all day at a mm-hmm. publishing house, go, dealing with two kids, yeah. and loving it so much that she'll get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to start writing, and write until 7, mm-hmm. and do it over and over and over and again. Because you don't wait to write the books until the kids are grown. You don't wait to write the books until you don't have to worry about money. Mm-hmm. You write them now. And, and then you won't have to worry about these things. She wrote The Bluest Eye. Yeah. Mm. And that's the end of it. Now, we, now the whole world knows who she is because she yeah. didn't wait. You're right. So That's don't powerful. Wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. I think that should take us into our first commercial break. What you think? You want to round us out? Tell everybody where they can watch us and listen to us. I don't know. I have you no know. idea where you can watch us. You're watching us right now. <laughs> okay? Be happy with that. Let's go to break. So first off, a literal banana that's duct taped to a wall, according to the NPR in South Korea. This is SEAL. A literal banana is duct taped to a wall out there and it's worth $120,000. Really? That's the story. What's the value of it? (laughs) Well, an Italian artist, um, the installation is called Comedian and um, it's just literally a duct tape banana that was eaten by a South Korean college student Um, and it was meant to represent everything from Charlie Chaplin's uh, slapstick comedy to the fruit status as an emblem of global trade. Mm. You know, it's interesting. Let me Mm -hmm. jump in and say this. For some reason, not not too long ago, I was doing some work on Vincent Van Gogh, Mm -hmm. and I had read this biography about him that I loved a little while ago, Mm -hmm. but I was drawn back to his life. Here's the point I'm making. Mm-hmm. So his fir- the only painting he ever sold when he was alive was called The Red Venue. Really? Yeah. He only sold one painting his whole life. Wow. And he sold that painting for like the equivalent um, now would be, I want to say between ten and $15,000. I think the actual price was like 416 francs. Mm-hmm. At the time. This is, 18, now, this is 1890. Yeah, for sure. 1890. Which was a lot back then. Okay. I think I got that right. 18, Google that. Make sure I got it right. <laughs> um, so he only sold one painting his whole life. Mm-hmm. 400 and something francs. Mm-hmm. The equivalent $10,000 or maybe a little more. Mm-hmm. Okay. The last Van Gogh painting that sold. Millions. 200 and something million dollars for that painting. And it just goes to show you, just going to get back to this, the value of anything isn't determined by the significance of the thing itself, but by how much people are willing to pay for it. Because exactly it was a Van Gogh painting when he painted then, it. Yeah, it still is. And, and it was worth everything that the one, later ones would be worth, yeah. except that nobody was willing to nobody. pay for the value. You ready for me? Ooh, you preaching. You ready for me? Okay, I know where you're going. I know where you're going. Just because people aren't willing to put in the work to have you or be around you, and just because they don't honor what you bring to the table, does that mean that you're not Vincent Van Gogh that's worth $200 million painting? Mm -hmm. You're worth it. So, so for example, um, 
You have you have you have any cash on you? Anybody have a cash? Any cash on? Them? Like I a dollar? I have like five dollars in my wallet. Give me a give me a five dollar. Five dollars. Let's do this real quick. All right. Give me this. All right. Good. All right. It's five dollar bill, right? This is mm -hmm. a. You gotta, you gotta look at the five dollars, man. I'm trying to do okay, something. Okay, I was over looking here. at the story. Five dollar bill, right? So okay. if I take the five dollars and I do this with it, yeah, it's still worth five dollars. Still worth five dollars. Yeah. If I take it and do this with it, mm -hmm. wait, stomp on that. I'll, I'll stomp, bring it back no, to you. So you if, stomp on it. Ah, ah, got it. it to the $5, ah, right? ah, okay. It's still worth five dollars. You're right. If I throw it away, it's still worth what? Five dollars. Because what it's been through. Mm -hmm. Doesn't dictate its value. Doesn't change the value. You're right. And people have to remember that. With respect to who and what we are. Yeah. Van Gogh sold one painting. Mm-hmm. But nobody's willing to buy it. Then he committed suicide right after he sold that. Not long after. But listen. Four months after. Hmm. I imagine going your whole life and you've painted like 900 paintings. And ain't nobody bought them. And one. nobody buys them. And nobody wants them. Van Gogh died believing he was a failure. Ain't that crazy? And let me say something real quick. He failed at everything he tried to do. Or did he? Well, let me let, yes and no. <laughs> he tried to go into business, mm -hmm. failed. He tried to go into uh, the seminary to be a pastor, mm -hmm. failed. Mm -hmm. Tried to be in business with his brother, failed. The mm -hmm. only thing he did well was paint. <laughs> and by the standards of being a successful, a successful painter, he failed at that. Nobody wanted to buy his, his brother was the only person who was his benefactor, Damn. who even you know, tried to support his work. Mm. So I said yes and no, right? Because ultimately, he was a, a tremendous success a and things, a genius. But, yeah. but in the day-to-day -day living of his life, he experienced tragic mm. episodes of failure and rejection. Yeah. So I'm not surprised people are wanting to pay whatever it is for a banana hanging on a wall. You know what's funny? That you might not have caught from the story. So a student went in there and literally bit took the banana off the wall and bit it because he said he was hungry, put it back on the wall, and they just replaced it with another banana. <laughs> the value of anything mm -hmm. is often not determined by the thing itself, yep. but by how much people are willing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And they say that, uh, you know, art is, first of all, art is a rich people sport, but they say that that's one of the biggest ways, and I might be exposed to some things that I shouldn't hear, but... It's one of the biggest ways that people with money try to hide their money in. Because you could say, for instance, anything. I could write a line on a piece of paper and sell it to you for $500,000 and say that it was art. And because I value that at $500,000, I can sell it at $500,000. I just need somebody that's willing to buy it. And hearing that, it brings up not even just the topic of art, but... I guess it could be art related too, you know, in the medium of all kinds of things of people wanting to share their experience, their story, their art, or whatever it may be. You see, uh, you know, somebody may be putting out the same product as the next person and getting paid two vastly different, you know, outcomes for it. And um, it just goes to show you though, like it, you never know. You never know what somebody might be willing to pay for you and how valuable somebody will find you. So therefore, putting a ceiling on ourselves is almost the most silly thing but we could ever do. But here's what you do know. You know? You do know what you should demand. Yeah. You don't know what people will pay for it, but you do know what you should demand. demand. What you should ask for. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times we don't ask because we think that a banana hanging on a wall isn't particularly valuable. Yeah. When the truth of the matter is People are willing to pay a lot of money for a banana hanging on a wall. And you can have that and probably change your life if you sold it. Well, it's a metaphor. You're which the is banana. crazy, though. I'm thinking just, I don't know, just spitting that out there, which is crazy. You wouldn't even know something like that could do that for you. It's okay. crazy. Again, it's a metaphor. I know. I know. I know. It's just crazy that it's reality to me, okay? Am I not allowed to be what? Is it surprised word? by this? Surprise is not the word he should have chosen. Amazed. According to News 13 down in South Carolina, a Coastal Carolina University student will graduate college before high school. How do you think that's possible? They have a bunch of AP credits. <laughs> Just AP credits? Do you think that's why? Let's see. Um, a high school within the university 
will be graduating from the, well, it's a, yeah, it says a student at the Scholars Academy, which is a high school within Coastal Carolina University. He'll be graduating from the university before he graduates from the actual high school. Um, the academy enables the students to gain college credit while pursuing their high school diploma at the same time, hmm. which is really cool. We had a school on campus at FAU, actually, that was a high school as, all, as well. But he'll graduate with a degree in psychology and a triple minor in Asian studies, Chinese studies, and language and intercultural studies. So they say he took like five classes in six weeks one summer, and he spent most of his free time just studying and whatnot. But he's pursuing a PhD in psychology, and um, yeah, he plans to become a professor after completing his studies. But um, I don't think I've ever heard of a student graduating college before they graduate high school before. Um, I thought you had to, you know, usually have is this a, a black kid. Degree. I'm not sure. I really hope it is. Studying Chinese, though, I don't know. No. Doesn't take away from the story, but yeah. But um, Hello. yeah, it says he's pursuing a PhD in psychology with a concentration on bilingual bilingualism, language, and cognition at the University of Texas in El Paso. So, um, is it a Hispanic kid? It might be if it was El Paso. Yeah, I'm like, ain't a whole lot of Chinese kids in El Paso. It ain't a whole lot of Chinese kids in Texas at all. But isn't that amazing, though? Would you encourage more kids to attempt to do this? Uh, would you encourage this being accepted more normally, like people all, pursuing Most both? kids can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> so let's not, let's, not, let's not sit around and encourage kids to do something that most kids can't do. Well, do you think it's a good thing? That's like, that's like comparing. That's like looking at LeBron James and saying, saying well, black people have it better. <laughs> well, you can't look at him. He is the exception. Why don't you just be LeBron? James? Yeah, he's, 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 not, he's not the norm. Yeah, you're right. You know, you know. So this kid is a, is exceptional. Yeah, I mean, yeah, now he is. He's a genius. I would probably. encourage kids to learn as much as they can, mm -hmm. as often as they can, because I tend to think education makes you a better person. Mm -hmm. um, the more you know, the more access you have to yourself. Yeah, and the better you can adjudicate other people's foolishness mm -hmm. in the presence of your wisdom. Part of the reason why people can't decide is because they're just as dumb as the people they're talking to. <laughs> Teach, Dr. Sean. But, but you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I would encourage people to be wise. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, one of the things I always, when I go off on my t rants about education, yeah. I always remember that I'm not, I'm not just talking about college. Yeah, you're talking about just being educated. I'm just being smart. Yeah. Being curious, reading. Studying mm -hmm. and really thinking, and not just getting all your information from YouTube. Yeah, because you know that ain't where it's at. <laughs> yeah, he is not a YouTube University supporter. Not guys. a YouTube University. If you haven't noticed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, do you think that he is foregoing his childhood by, you know, moving at the pace that he's doing? That he doesn't get a chance to really enjoy a little being bit. a kid. A yeah. little, a little bit, and it may come back to bite him. Mm -hmm. There, there is. There is always, and there will always be, a consequence for every decision that we make. Mm -hmm. No matter how good or noble it is, there's a price to be paid. And the price that you pay for being ambitious and great and gifted is often loneliness. Yeah, it's it's often, you sacrifice something. There's yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah. And so, yeah, he's going he's gonna to pay a price for not mm -hmm. being social. Yeah. He may, he's not going to... Dating may be difficult. Friendships may be hard for him. Um, but a that's a price that he's willing to pay. A lot easier when you're smart and got money, though. Well. It helps. Mm. The dating world, I'm sure he's going to be all right. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, I, I don't actually agree with that. No? I think hurt is hurt. Oh, yeah, of course it is. You know, it, it, but who says he's hurting, you know? So I'm just saying it's a lot, he's a lot more attractive than he would be if he wasn't well, intelligent. Well, your, your question presupposes. Uh-huh the possibility of him missing out on something. Yeah. So based upon that question. Yeah, that basis. I'm okay. saying, even if you're smart and rich and lonely, it's still lonely. It's still lonely. You could be broke and happy and a house full of people. Yeah. It's still lonely. You're right. According to Insider, North Carolina lawmakers are introducing a bill to ban participation trophies for kids. I think this is kind of interesting, actually, because obviously I grew up in sports and whatnot. But there's been a controversy about this since I was younger, I feel like, um, of people getting, I guess, riled up about 
yeah, kids getting used to just being rewarded for just participating and not necessarily winning or excelling in whatever it is. And I was kind of twofold on it because I was always one of the, you know, star athletes growing up in my area. So it wasn't something that I necessarily myself stressed over often. But then when I played a sport like golf or tennis or something for the first time that I wasn't as familiar with, I actually kind of appreciated my participation trophy because I wouldn't have got nothing <laughs> if I didn't get one. But um, do you think it gives people a, um, or not people, but do you think it's harming kids by rewarding them for just participating and giving this sense of that's how life is going to be when you get older as opposed to knowing, you know, as you get older, just participating isn't enough to be rewarded, you know, in certain ways. I mean, because I mean, you could look at it like parents reward their kids without them having to get participation. So they might take them to dinner, their favorite, you know, place to go or do something with their friends because they did a good job with something or got good grades or whatever it might be. But I'm curious to know how you feel about that, you know, and if you think it's breeding a softer generation of kids. Well, mm. tough one, huh? No, well, it's not tough. It's just complicated because yeah. on the one hand, I think it's good that we honor as many people as we possibly can. Yeah, I mean, they're kids, too. They deserve to feel So I think, it's, I think it's important that everybody feels like they're a part of something, mm -hmm. lest we turn children into monsters and not even know that we're doing it. But I also think it's important that children understand that life isn't necessarily fair and mm -hmm. that often you don't win. We have to teach children how to lose as much as we try to teach them how to succeed. Yeah. We have to teach them how to fall. And, and, and because one person wins at this, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's that sparing, uh, sparing their feelings yeah. is a way for us to not fully develop them. Yeah, I agree. Because the vicissitudes of life come to us all. All of us are going to have to. You're going to find out. And so, you know, of course, my generation, we had no damn participation trophy. <laughs> Either you won or you didn't. Yeah. And you had to stand up there and sort of t take it, deal with it, and then use it as the inspiration for you to come back and want to win next time. Win yeah. next time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe you didn't win. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that's better. I'm just saying that's how it was. Yeah. And I'm saying that what that did for me, I like the results. Yeah. I can, I can, <laughs> I'm about to be sardonic. Go for it. Go for it. Um, I, don't, I don't wake up with anxiety every day. Yeah. I don't need to smoke weed 14 times a day to yeah. get through my afternoon. Okay? I don't, mm -hmm. I don't need to lose myself on TikTok Live. Yeah. I don't, I don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying there's a direct correlation. <laughs> You're like, but it might have something to but do I'm saying, with it. I'm saying there's a reason why. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel there's you. There's a reason know. why we're not paralyzed yeah, by, by somebody not calling me back. You have to ever call me back. Yeah. You already forgot about him anyway. Listen. You know I'm <laughs> I know how you roll. You fire me? Okay. Somebody else will hire you. I'm going to get somebody to buy me a cigar. Think about it and figure something out. Yeah. Because we had to fail. We had to learn. We, we, we didn't get rewarded for being there. Yeah. You had to sit in the shadow and spend a night, as Paul says in the New Testament, spend a night and a day in the deep. Mm -hmm. And there's value to that. Yeah, for sure. You know, as parents, those of you who have kids and you're watching, as parents, we try to protect our kids from things that we actually should expose them to. Because then they'll know how to deal with them. The thing is not to let the kid go through failure by themselves. That's, That's what we should, shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. We should let them deal with failure and then talk them through it. About what failure actually is and how they're not a failure just because they lost a game. And how do you, how do you man, more, even more so, mm -hmm. yes, you're right. Yeah. But even more so, how do you manage these emotions, when you this fail. frustration? People don't know how to deal with failure a lot what of do you deal? What do you yeah. do with these feelings? Yeah. Right? And they're valid. And understanding and teaching them that they're valid. That's what we need to talk about. Yeah. Not just give people participation trophies and not just deny them mm -hmm. the failure that they need. Yeah. 
and that's what sportsmanship has always been about, you know, when growing up in sports and our coaches teaching us, you know, after the game, make sure you shake everyone's hand and why they have these different practices and things for that. Character. Yeah, to build character and show you in life. Resilience. You know, how to win like a man or woman and how to lose like a man or woman, you know? Resilience. And your, your generation is not resilient. Just not. <laughs> Talk about my generation. Y'all are made out, y'all that was an attack. <laughs> y'all are emotionally made out of porcelain. Oh, man. Not my whole generation. I know the one above me may be a little bit more so. but I'm the one above you, and we're made out of rubber. You drop us, we bounce up. <laughs> you drop you, you shatter into a thousand pieces. Sometimes. And the one after y'all... They're, they're even you pick them up and they break. <laughs> you ain't even got to drop them. To pick them you up. pick up Generation Z, oh my God, why do I have to go to work? Why do I have to pay a bill? The rent, capitalism sucks. <laughs> it should all be free. College should be free. Yeah, College should not be free. Unless... There's no unless. unless it should be affordable. Unless you're on a scholarship. Unless you're on a scholarship, right? that's true. <laughs> it, it should be affordable, but it shouldn't be free. It should be free. No, it should not be free. Not college, huh? Now, these are the same people that don't think their iPhone should be free. Or, the, or their sneakers that they spend $2,000 on should be free. But education should be free because that has no value. But you know what's crazy about it? Most people don't even put themselves in a position to go to college and then complain mm-hmm. about it not being you know, affordable anyway. But the point is, Generation Z. <laughs> I'm just saying, but it's just crazy to me because we, I still keep thinking about that story that we talked about, whether it be last episode, two episodes, about how 54% of people literally are out here functioning with a sixth grade level education. And when you hear that and we talk about college and all of these things, man, there's so much to be learned just in that period leading up to being able to go to college in that age that you develop to be able to get there and actually continue to grow and develop because you well, develop I, tools. I see your point, raise your point, mm-hmm. since you want to go down this rabbit hole. Here we go. Most of the people we saw on a previous show, we said that um, uh, 64% of eighth graders don't read at an eighth grade level. Mm-hmm. And 54% of adults in this country have a, um, a prose literacy level of a sixth grader. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm going to see your point, raise your point. Okay. And most of those people, the eighth graders I mentioned and the adults, mm-hmm. have high school diplomas. Exactly. So they graduated from high school with while, a sixth grade. While using sixth grade. Learning skills. It tells you enough, huh? And then go on to be adults in society that are having kids and... They graduated from high school. (laughs) With a sixth. With a sixth grade prose literacy level. What did you say about damn high schools that didn't notice that this kid (laughs) ain't ain't functioning in terms of his cognitive intellectuality Mm. at the right level? And do you think that that's the curriculum not being proficient enough and making sure they weed out who's actually learning what? Do you think the system is just broken and too easy? I I think that we live in a country that will pay LeBron James $200 million and a teacher $40,000. Yeah. When it should be reversed. Sorry, LeBron. Mm -hmm. I love you. Yeah. I mean, he could still get his $40 million. Playing a basketball game is not worth $200 million. I'm sorry. People paying him to. No, it's fine. I'm I'm not, (laughs) again, I'm not knocking it. Yeah. I'll get your money. I'm all for it. It's just the principle. I'm saying a, a country and a culture that values mm-hmm. people being the best version of themselves would have a, would have a, the reverse happening. Yeah. You'd be paying teachers $200 million to, mm-hmm. to produce the kind of people you want. Yeah. And you'd be paying athletes whatever it is you pay them to entertain well, you. It's crazy. I wish almost there was a way to reward people for being good. Imagine if you got paid for just being a good person and having good you know, decisions <laughs> in life that were cognizant to other people around you and just blessing others. Imagine if there was a way for people to get paid for that, though, and how much differently people would probably act. No, well, that's the problem. That, that, that's, that's the fundamental problem with the thought. Mm-hmm. I understand what you mean. You get what I'm trying to so say? I, I don't know I, how to put it in words. I embrace the, the, the spirit of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. The problem is it commodifies goodness. Yeah, true, and, and that makes, shouldn't be It makes goodness the purview 
of something commercial. I got you. Um, you do, but you do get paid for being good. Mm-hmm. You get tomorrow. Yeah. You get to live a year from now. You get to have longevity. You get to have peace of mind. Because when you're good, I ain't got to worry about a bunch of people I'm screwing over coming to coming get Coming back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We went so far away from that. You know we almost that? forgot we even talked we about it. Yeah. Trophy. Yeah, but no. I, um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm for it. I'm against it at the same time. Okay. I think we ought to honor every... We, so how about we don't do participation trophies, but we find a way to honor all of our children in a given classroom at some point over the year. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, but I just don't think that protecting kids from pain and is disappointment way, is a yeah. way to make them better. Cause but I, I truly do appreciate sports for reasons like this, though, because I don't know if I were outside of the sport community growing up where I would have learned certain lessons about how to lose, because then it would be more so me just having to learn through actual life experiences that are just you know, personifying as losses that's, to me. But that's the point I make. Yeah. You know, no, nobody. He, I just got a lot more practice. I feel like they're doing listen, it through. Sports. Well, that may be that may or may not be true. It right? felt like I got a lot of practice. At what losing? Yeah, from playing sports and knowing how to. No, I get it. Mm-hmm. But the but the write this down. This is a list of all the things people don't teach. Okay. All right. You two. Let's go. You two and you two over there yourself. All right. All, all right. right. Let's go. People don't teach us how to fail. We just covered that. Mm-hmm. People don't teach us how to be in relationships. Nope. Nobody ever taught you how to be in a relationship. Nobody sat mm-hmm. down and said, this is how you do this. And if they're parents that are our, kudos to them. because Nobody's doing it. Nobody's given long, sustained anything. Yeah. Okay. When you're in school, mm-hmm. nobody teaches you. And they're just starting to change this. Nobody teaches you how to manage money. No. Now you have a math class. You they don't do even geometry, talk about money in school. And algebra, yeah. right? You're doing Pythagorean mathematics. Mm-hmm. How about you teach me how to save money and make balance it. a checkbook? <laughs> yeah. they, they, how, how is it you can go to high school and never, and it's not a part of the graduating curriculum, money management? Mm-hmm. This is how you invest. This is the stock market. Because Why is that? It's, it's, hold on. Does somebody not want these kids to know? Is somebody benefiting from the ignorance of children not knowing how to manage? You get what I'm saying? I do. I got one more. Okay? These are all the things that people don't teach us that they should have taught mm-hmm. us. All right? People don't teach children how to argue. <laughs> how to disagree. Yeah. How to sit down with their, with their Best boyfriend, friend or girlfriend. Whoever. Mm-hmm. Gay lover, lesbian mm-hmm. lover, mm-hmm. worker, mm-hmm. employee, whatever the hell it is, yeah. and can argue them down to the T. And then say, you want some pizza? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want to eat some food? That stir. was good. Yeah. Like, that was, you made some good points. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we teach our kids how to argue? Because a lot of adults don't even know how to argue. Because nobody thought it was important nobody for taught us to, them. to disagree without ruining the relationship. Yeah. Disagree without burning down the house. And you know what's crazy? Because you taught me this about how the party system in America was even created. It was a way for people to have disagreements without killing each other because back then that was what they would have done if they were on different sides of, the, you know, the ideology. That's and, the purpose of politics. And, yeah, and politics were created. Because I was so – I came to you with the question because, like, why does this even exist? And when you gave me that answer, it made so much sense to me. But then as you bring this topic up right now, you see where I'm going with this? It makes me think, like, damn – like, why don't we do that more often? Why don't we teach and put things in place that are going to be able to allow people to have, you know, disagreements without resulting in their demise or somebody else's? And the gift in that, you see it in people that do have the ability to disagree with people but still get along. Those are people that stand out. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you're like, wow, you're not going to kill me over that? You, mm-hmm. you swallowed that and just kept it moving? Like, Thank you. Um, you almost want to thank people that don't <laughs> give you what you know you're expecting from the majority of the human population. Did you, did you write down that list? Yeah. Okay. Give me the list back. Yeah. Let's hear it. Give me the list back. This is Tyler. Everybody. It's our Things we aren't taught: how to fail, mm-hmm, how okay. to be in a relationship, how to manage money, and how to argue. How to argue. All right. How many was that? Four. 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 Okay. Here's how the to thing. count. Here's the thing. <laughs> 
I think we're not taught that. Mm -hmm. And Malcolm X used to say this. Yeah. We're not taught that because the only one who don't like it when the sheep get smart is a wolf trying to make them his meal. Mm -hmm. And you asked who, who is benefiting from them not. Somebody doesn't want mm -hmm. us to think for ourselves yeah. and to be able to marshal the resources in our lives mm -hmm. and love and failure and arguing in a mm -hmm. way where we could actually own. Use it for good. Yeah. yeah. Education, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm never, I would say I never, but if I designed a school, mm -hmm. like if I could design a school or a school's curriculum, mm -hmm. it would be radically different than what we teach. Yeah, and it's been this system for so long. I was reading recently, and I wish I remembered in detail as you were talking about it, I was reading how the American education system in itself was created. You may know, but I was reading about it. I don't remember in detail what it was, but I remember it was something that had nothing to do with anything catering to a child's development and being a functioning adult. It was more so created, oh, I think it was something to do with um, obedient workers, because back then it was more about getting people to go to school so that they would be able to be good workers. And for you know these owners of companies and you know things that were going on at that time, to be able to have obedient people that could just follow simple instruction mm -hmm. and do what they needed them to for them to be able to be more successful. But here's the thing, because this, this is a good teaching moment. Mm -hmm. You have to be very careful when you appeal to the history of a thing yeah. that you don't make a, a, an absolute correlation to what the thing is now. The present, yeah. Right? It needs to be liquid because, and because evolving. Because... Everything you say may in fact be true, mm -hmm. right? But that is not directly responsible. For everything else. Within the span of 300 years. You're right. Directly responsible for what we allow it to continue to be, mm -hmm. right? It's gotten really tough to change, though, because for example, of the way it was built. Hold on. For example, mm -hmm. most of the Ivy League schools, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, mm -hmm. were religious schools when they started. Were they? They were, the, the, the original um, school at Harvard was the Divinity School. Okay. They, it was created to create pastors. Okay. Morehouse College, the same thing. It was, mm -hmm. it was created to create ministers. Mm -hmm. It was the Baptist Alliance thing. I'm forgetting okay. the name of it. The, right, forgetting the name of it. The point is, mm -hmm. that's not what it is now. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So... What we have to deal with is what it is now. We acknowledge what it was, mm -hmm. why it was created. Mm -hmm. But we have to reimagine it to suit our needs. Mm -hmm. And education in this country is trifling. Yeah, I was going to say that's just one of the things. Not because education is bad, mm -hmm. but because how we try to educate children is, is incongruent to the children we're actually educating. You're right. I just don't get how we can use a system that doesn't evolve, yet people are constantly evolving and changing. How long do you think it is before society as a whole has kind of moved on and shifted? It's like every like five years, you know, things really evolve, you know, whether it be technology, whether it be, you know, just people in general getting more able to do other things physically or, you know, mentally intelligent, you know, wise. It's like, I don't know. It just never has made sense to me as far as like even like the Constitution and things of that nature. I don't want to go into that realm, but... There's just so many things that have been used for hundreds of years that haven't evolved with people when we change so much faster than these templates that, you know, society and government sometimes try to fit people to, you know, follow. When it's like nothing is the same now that it was when that was created. So therefore, what makes people believe that that's going to be the solution to today's problems when... You know, you're basing it off of a time where they didn't even think all people were freaking equal. They didn't even know that the earth was actually round back then. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of things that were completely different at the time of these creations that we are now allowing to control the mass of a lot of societies. And that, to me, is kind of scary because were these put in place for the reason of not being able to be changed? Or were these put in place for... Any other reason? I don't know. You tell me what you think, because I, it blows my mind sometimes that it's not that obvious to other people and to 
you know, What's the maps that, that we're using very outdated, whether it be principles, whether it be laws, you know, ideologies that don't match today's current day and age. I mean, we come out with a new iPhone every year because what? They feel like they can get it to do more because it's out of date, because they want to keep up with what humans need and what well, is, you know back, what I mean? Let me push back and say, and say, but that's what's wrong with the iPhone. <laughs> that too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what's wrong with our expectations of, of each other, mm -hmm. is that when, you, when your iPhone is outdated, you just get another one. Mm -hmm. And that's how we treat friendships. But let, they, let, me, let me finish the thought. Updates exist. Let me finish the thought. Okay. We just we just we we, we discard it. We okay. get another one, mm -hmm. right? We we move on from this. Okay. We 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 judge people. You still got you still got an iPhone 10? Aren't they up to 15? Whatever they're up yeah, to. Yeah, I got a 12. But, my, yeah. I don't know what I got. <laughs> um, my point is, I'm only pushing back to say, it's not that we need to have a fundamental reorientating of the principles of education. Mm -hmm. I think those things are I don't enduring. know if it's the principles I'm speaking on as much as the structure. I think what we need to do is reimagine the content of it. Okay. And the problem that we have with education in this country, and I don't know how we got into this subject, but the problem we have with education in this country is that the country doesn't value it. Yeah. So a kid, a kid sees his country or her country not valuing, not valuing yeah. what it means to be intelligent. Yeah. So what is, what is the motive, what is the incentive that we give the kid, unless that kid has it on his own or her own, mm -hmm. to be that way? And it goes, I, I bring it back to where we started. I think yeah. we started this part of the conversation. <laughs> and that is we pay LeBron $200 million, mm -hmm. We pay this teacher $40,000. $40, yeah, so and, and what does the kid learn is the valuable thing. Yeah. It's not the teacher. It's, this, it's, it's running up and down the court, bouncing the ball, mm. as if that's the most important thing in the world. Or just being on TV in it's, and itself. You know, like entertaining, entertaining mm. people is, is like the most important thing people in the world. People associate being seen more with, you know, being quote unquote so whatever. So I think personally that if you're a parent, you can't count on uh, the school system to teach your children. Yeah. I think if you're a parent, you got to teach them some of the things that I've given on this list. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to supplement and augment the education your children get so that they can truly be educated. Yeah. Math and science and history are important. Sorry mm -hmm. to all of you who don't believe in any of that. They're still important. You, mm -hmm. need, you, do, you do need to know the Constitution because you live in a country that that's a constitutional democracy. It, yeah. no. You need to know whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is. But you also need to know the things that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. How do you love somebody? Mm -hmm. Who's, so who, who's volunteering to teach us that? Yeah. How do you argue? How do you fail? Mm -hmm. But now you're seeing a little bit of an effort of people now that everybody is able to have a voice in some way and create their own. But you're seeing people try to make up for what it sounds like we're lacking in those areas. But now it's an even slippier slope, slipperier slope because you're dealing with people that you don't even know if they're actually fully educated or, you well, know. Well, they're not. Exactly. They're 400 pounds <laughs> in front of a green screen in their mama's basement. And they don't leave the house because when they're not on YouTube, they're on Twitch. So it's gotten very dangerous because now we're at a place where how do we go back and fix this, you know? It's, and it's people a, you are have trying a book to take it in their own hands. You have a book in your bag? And we're, we're finishing up, too. We're um, running out of time. So I want you to say your last point that you were going to make, and then we're going to need to wrap it up. It's not that complicated. Yeah. I mean, the same country that produced that produces the dumbest people you can think of, I won't mention any names, also produced Martin King. Yeah. The same country that produced the dumbest rapper you can possibly think of mm -hmm. or the dumbest athlete who's in mm -hmm. clubs with guns and their shirt off. <laughs> I don't know who that would be. John also Ryan. produced James Baldwin. Yeah. Also produced Toni Morrison. Also produced Richard Rorty. Yeah. And Hillary Putnam. Yeah. This country is capable of producing greatness. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. Absolutely. And so we have to accentuate the things that allow us to produce that. And to give space to the things that allow us to produce, mm -hmm. you know, shirtless NBA players <laughs> with guns. Both of them make the country interesting and necessary. But I think we need to be a little more. Only one is pushing the country forward. How about that? You know. All right, that's it, huh? Yeah, that's it. That was a good one. I'll finish this next week. <laughs> I'm lying because I won't even remember 
what I was talking about while we are talking about it. <laughs> we'll be back next week, though. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time on McMillan Tomorrow. See you next Thursday. Bye.